Tonight on Chim Stock Africa, my guest Angbeko and Tokozo Mbata. This award-winning gospel singing couple sits down to share with me about their love story. Tonight on Chim Stock Africa. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. Hi there, and welcome to this segment of your show. Like I said in the introduction, I am so pleased to have with me in the studio Mr. and Mrs. Mbata. <laughs> uh, it's so good to have you. Ntokozo Mbambo is known all over the world, all over the world as a gift from South Africa to the continent, to the whole world in this, not just the area of gospel music, but just the grace that God has given you to sing. And Mr. Mbata, you're known for the business mm. <laughs> behind this, the engine behind this whole thing, mm. Coco Records. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, we know that you are a couple. Mm. So we welcome you to the show as a couple. You're welcome. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. You. So good to have you. <laughs> you know, when people look at people, we think of what they do in public, the singing, the music, the business, but there is the love story. Where did your love story start? I would start with you, Mr. Mbata. <laughs> well, I think you're going to start with her. No, I'll come to her. I'm, I'm, she's looking at me. I'm going to let her talk. Wants to hear the story, too. No, oh, she hasn't heard your side of the story. No, 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 no. <laughs> we always have issues with, the, with, with his side of the story. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> let, let's, let's hear his side. Let's hear his side. And and then you are, I'll come to you to correct whatever needs to be corrected. So go ahead, over to you. Okay, um, mm, yeah. What was the question? The question is, how did it start? <laughs> Where did you meet? Okay. Where did it start? I always knew Ndoz Mbambo, a singer, because we're both from KZN. Mm. She's from Devon, I'm from Richards mm. Bay, which is like an mm. hour and a half mm. away from Devon. So I always knew the singer. Uh, you know, that was has been 15 years for many years because people have been saying that was Mbambo since was 15. Like, no, she's not 15 now. <laughs> at that time exactly. when she appeared on the stage of joyous celebration yeah. that was, it was the for the whole, yeah <laughs> so i always knew her would meet in concerts uh, church conferences you know i just knew her as a fellow uh, singer you know a musician in the industry and i think i got to know her better um when we started working with joyous celebration because i think we joined the same year yeah, yeah so when i arrived there oh those members here as well. So we started working together. That was 2001. Mm. So we started working together. I think I actually got to know her. And I was like, ah, this one. I can live with this one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I would say the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, we, I think uh, I approached you, ne? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. approached me. Yes, yeah. No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> so tell us the first approach, the first approach. Uh, Did you get a no the first time? Just tell us what the first approach was. It was quite different because before I approached her, I uh, intentionally uh, made, uh, he, she, would call it, she would call them deposits. <laughs> You know, the, you know the principle of sowing and reaping, you plant seeds. A trip where you have not sowed. Exactly, you know, so I think it made it easier for me. So what were you sowing? Uh, actions, words, you know, truth is special, different from others, because we're a group of people here. With and all of it yeah, intentional, because you had a goal. Oh, that I love her, I want to marry her, you know. You know, for us, uh, the way we were raised, you know, and I would want to raise my children mm -hmm. like that, you, is that when you get into a relationship, it should it's for life. straight for, mm -hmm. for, for, for marriage. It was not even like I was trying mm -hmm. to see if this thing's going to work or not, you know. That part, I did it before I even approached mm -hmm. her, you know, to get to know her, you know. But I, I made those uh, few deposits uh, through actions so that by the time I had to speak out, uh, she was sold out. Well, you saw that. Tell us where he missed it in the story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. 
Pick the holes. Plug the holes. He was very, um, yeah, he was, he, he, he was on track. Maybe because he knew he had an invigilator watching yeah, very I think close. so. I think so. I think, I, I think your eye really scared you. <laughs> 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 no, that's exactly what he did. I think by the time he approached me, because of these deposits that mm -hmm. he had already made and because of the friendship that we had already developed, I was already on board. At what time during the deposit or before did you feel, this might be the guy? At what point was, was that for you? Because he said the point for him, but where did that start for you? <laughs> I think it took a while because I'm very slow, okay. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a church girl. I'm a typical mm. church girl. So anything that, I don't, I don't do those things. <laughs> anything that had to do with boys, I was just like, ah, yeah, like no, nope, stay away from boys. So I was, I grew up in that kind of environment. And um, I think it took a while for me to get the pictures. Oh. That's oh. what it's about. <laughs> oh, this, okay. I actually kind of like him, you know, this could work. And, and the beautiful thing about it is that I, I had a very strong relationship with my mom, mm -hmm. is that I told her about it. And, and you know, so I, I, I'm a firm believer in getting um, confirmation from, from um, uh, our seniors, mm -hmm. you know, who, who, who know us and who also see the future as mm -hmm. well. I always say my mom was always prophetic because I, before I even said the name, she already knew who he was. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was so important to get that um, confirmation from her. And she did. And she was like, I know. Yeah, I approve, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. You married so early. You were 22. Yeah. Well, some people will say it's not early. <laughs> our, our parents married way earlier than yeah. that. Yeah. But in the, today's context, 22 yeah, is early. early. You yeah. were 20. What were you, Mata? 28. Yeah. Uh, was it challenging to be. Oh, I come to you now. Was it challenging to be trusting to marriage that early? How did you, how did you find it the first few years? I have no idea. I have no idea. I think, I think it was. I think it was. I think it was. It was very awkward because, first of all, um, growing up, I, I, I had decided that I actually don't want to get married. Really? Why? That's not my thing. Why? Why? I'm, I'm not about that submission life. <laughs> 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 I got my plans, I got my vision. Oh, I've got my plans, I want to be rich, independent, I want to do this, I want to do this. I had my life set before, you know, before he came along. Messed it all up. And he messed it all up. <laughs> um, so, so that was my plan, but God obviously had other plans. And um, honestly, I feel like I was, I didn't quite know. But I had, I had an idea. I don't think you really fully know what marriage is about mm. until you actually mm. get in, you know? No matter how many, I had like five bridal showers <laughs> before my, my wedding. I, sometimes I would ask my mom, uh, do you guys not trust that I'll actually be able to pull this through? <laughs> Why so many bridal showers? You know, but I, I guess they just wanted to make sure that I'm fully equipped for the road. But you know, even through all five of them, it, I still felt like it wasn't enough. They didn't, there's some parts that they missed, mm -hmm. you know, because um, when, when we started our marriage, absolutely we were young. Um, um, I realized in the first month that I'm actually a selfish being, mm. you know, that it's always about me and what I want. And then I realized that I, uh, I can't live like that anymore. You know, there's this other person that I decided mm. that I want to coexist with, mm. you know, and journey together, you know, um, and, and it, it felt like marriage became a mirror that reflected um, my true being mm. and, and, and my true purpose. and and. It took a while for us to get our groove. Obviously, I, th I always say, I think like the first three, four, <laughs> the first five years are a bit yeah. shaky because everybody's still- Trying to learn still... how to dance together. Exactly. Yeah, you don't know. I know you dance. <laughs> <laughs> You're not quite sure what yeah. to do. Am I? What, what are the boundaries? Can I do this? Can, yeah. Do I iron his clothes? Do I not iron his clothes? What does he prefer? Um, what do I prefer? You know, so it's just a trial and error pre period until you actually figure each other out and you're able to, um, you know, smoothly dance together. Yeah. Yeah. Mbata, what was challenging for you the early days? It's the same thing that she mentioned about selfishness. It's, it's such a 
a shameful thing to realize who you really are. Yeah. You yeah. know, n realizing that I'm I'm born again, child of God. I'm Christian, filled with the Holy Spirit, but I don't know how to accommodate another person mm -hmm. in my space. You know, I had to learn that about myself. It's no longer about you now. Mm -hmm. It's about us. Even the way you speak. Mm -hmm. You know, I, re I remember that our elders sometimes will reprimand us when I say mine. They say, no, no, no. It's no longer mine now. It's it's the both of you. Yeah. You know. So I had to learn that. You know, and also learn how to love her the way that she wants to be loved, you know. And an example for us is very high as men, which is Christ and the church. And you're like, yeah, did really Jesus wanted us to love our wives the way he loves the church, you know? You know, and also leading by example as well. And, and it's been my cry as well, the fact that I feel like women are prepared for marriage more than men. Why do you say uh, so? Man, she mentioned she went for five bridal showers. <laughs> How many did you go for bachelor showers? He didn't even the, get one. That was not even a proper <laughs> thing. A My friends just came and just did pry for me and they're just talking nonsense and we laughed. <laughs> talking nonsense. You know, Which guys do generally. Uh, <laughs> and you know, later, a few years in into the marriage, in, inside the marriage, I'm like, Nah, Nobody you know. told me and the expectations this. after you're married, you know, that you have to do this, you have yeah. to do that. This is what I There expect. has to be a vision. And I'm like, what is the vision, you know? <laughs> and she was, she was told that a man provides a vision. Yeah. And I'm like, but no one told me how to throw up or prepare this vision now. <laughs> I just fell in love. I just love this woman. I just want to live with her, you know. And now there are expectations, you know. Mm -hmm. I think those are the few challenges. But I think over and above all, I think what the good thing is that we were just married in love with each yeah, other, you know, yeah. so love covered the multitude of those <laughs> issues <laughs> that were not in place. Yeah. Because 15 years after, you're still laughing together. Yeah. That, you understand? <laughs> there is, must be a strong foundation of friendship. Yeah. Those deposits really worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge, huge deposit. Yeah. Uh, why did you wait three years before having the first child? You. Yeah. Well, was that was that accident? Uh, I mean, I, I've chatted with him before. I want to hear your own. I think we never. Let, let, let her answer, please, 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 please. I don't think we actually planned okay. this, our first baby. <laughs> I think it just happened. Um, the thing is, but we were told that we should. We it's. It was advised that we should wait before we have kids, not rush to have kids, um, because we were still young, so we were 22, there was still time, and also just so that we could lay a strong foundation for our marriage as well, without a third party. Yes. Sorry, babies. <laughs> without having third parties involved, because the arrival of children really does Takes all the attention, yeah. everything, you know, in a marriage. So. I mean, um, when we had marital counseling as well, and, and even the, the, the adults that we looked up to as well, they also advised us. You know, it, it, it's ideal mm. to wait a bit so that you can get to know each other, because as much as you were girlfriend and boyfriend before, but, you but you've never lived together, you know, just so that you can figure things out and, and, and solidify, mm. you know, the marriage aspect and the friendship aspect before kids come along. And, and, and we waited. They first said wait for two years, and then we, we, we added an extra year. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Normally, marriage in itself comes with this, like you just said, stress, this yeah. thing. But add to this two growing careers. Yeah. You, by 22, when you're married, you've already been in joy celebration for seven years. You were there for 11 years, right? Yeah. So another four years, and you were on a trajectory. <laughs> hmm? And this whole thing growing, and then later on the business growing. How do you? cope with that in the midst of this love affair. I start with you, Mbak. How do we cope with that? Are we, are we coping? <laughs> we are coping somehow. <laughs> so, go back, just, just dig your brain and tell me. I know there might not be a method to the madness, but yes, try, you're right, sir. Try, try and see if there's something you can pull out for our viewers. I think it's levels and levels. You know, you got married, you're like, okay. We, I remember even when, we, when I, I started in the music industry, I just wanted to sing. And you realize there's a business side to this thing. Okay, and I have to learn that, you know. Even in marriage as well, you know, when we, we had, we first had a, a good working relationship before we actually even fell in love. Yeah. So I think that has been our advantage yeah. uh, until today. So when we got married, okay. We, she, sorry, to yes. correct that, she wasn't signed up to Coco where, before you got married, or was she? No, that's no, a later. 
Peter thing. Okay, so but you had a working relationship in terms of singing together. Yeah, yeah, yeah celebration. Okay, okay, yeah. good. And also, yeah. He also produced my album, yes. my okay, first album okay. as well. So we had a very strong working relationship, working relationship. It, even before we became friends okay. and and lovers. Okay. And okay. As time so God has life. already started putting all the strings yes. together. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> So go ahead and try and try and analyze it, and I'll have her complete it. Yeah. So 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 we were working. So she has a gig. We go. I play for her. I have a gig. She most of the time I would go by myself, you know, because I just want I just want to get my attention to me. Because when I go with her, <laughs> the focus is on her now, you know, you know. But it got it got to a point where we had to put some structures on how we do things because I think after we got married, we just flowing, you know, we're just yeah. going with the flow, but we're family now, uh, they're kids now, we need to put things in structure, who does this, who does that, you know, where is your area of mm -hmm. focus in this uh, whole house thing and also where do we draw the line as, much as far as work is concerned. I, I would say, uh, I, I wouldn't even say today we're masters of that, but I think the way that we've been doing things has really worked for us, mm -hmm. you know, because with the arrival of kids, uh, there's limited time now, we have to you know, before the kids arrive, we could just decide that next week we're going anywhere, we're going where for, for the longest of time, you know, but now we have to plan, you know, uh, our lives. But I, I would say, as she has mentioned, mentioned the trial and error, there were moments where we were like, now nah, we're messing this we thing up, we're not we getting tried the, it right. We tried the manager thing. Uh, you yeah, 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 there? exactly. Sorry. Thanks for reminding. <laughs> yeah, I tr we tried the manager thing where I'm managing her. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't never work. worked for us. It didn't work for no, us. No, no, no. <laughs> Just mess things up. We mess things up with yeah. our relationship. We would okay. find ourselves having arguments yeah. because um, something happened with the client, or yeah. he didn't get back to a client, and then we're like, uh -uh. Oh, I messed up with but the client because I'm too much of a husband now. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is business. But I see an opportunity, and he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my wife can't go there. there. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's for us. So we're like, Ah, okay. Uh, let's let's separate. go back to the drawing board. Let's separate this. Let's let's get help. Let's yeah. get an outside manager yeah. so that to lighten the load wow. because this isn't working for us right now. You know the beauty I see here is the organic nature of your relationship. The de deposit as we laughed about it, it's just like a friendship grows. Yeah. Like you said, it's not like we sorted out this business thing. We just, yeah. and it allows you to continue having fun along yeah. the way. Tell me Martha, you mentioned something. How do you cope with an oversized, how do I call it, oversized? reputation or ministry or name Tokozo <laughs> Mambo <laughs> uh, so that you're called Mr. Mambo <laughs> hey, yeah some people just call me like no <laughs> how, how do you how do you cope with that how do you cope with this large mm. thing I mean you, you just, I don't, you know what I'm talking about. I hear you. How do you cope with that and uh, speak to men who are called into that? I think God has really helped me, mm -hmm. you know, because when we started, I didn't see this big brand, you know, it was just my wife. But as time goes on, I realized, no, this person is big. This yeah. person is huge, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But I think the, the relationship that, has, that I have with God and also the teachings, because we're very grounded in a local t church mm -hmm. about who you are, you know, okay. because I think the problem begins when you have personal insecurities. Wow. Wow. So you can't allow someone mm. to, to, to grow, you know. I think one of our biggest advantage with, with the church that we fellowship on is that our pastor is a very confident person in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that has wrapped on to us as well you know we know who we are we know we are in christ i know who i am as a person wow. so i'm not intimidated about about who she is mm -hmm. actually and the, the, the more she grows that's a benefit for the Bless family you. you know i don't want to miss on the greatness on the benefits that comes yeah. from her greatness so wow. i need to work hard and make sure that she becomes as big as god wants her to be because the family benefits at the end of the day the family benefits you you're know. the biggest cheerleader she has i have to be <laughs> How, how has that dynamics, though, we looked at his side, yeah. how has that worked? Because for some people, maybe not for you, it's like, well, okay, now, I walk in here and that's me they're talking about, that's my husband, and, you know, how do we manage this thing now? <laughs> Was that, I know you're a confident person, but how with this man you love in the midst of all of this? 
I think for me, what, what I've made sure is that I constantly affirm him okay. as well. Um, I think it's, it's every wife's duty to be a constant word of affirmation towards the husband, even even if it's not necessarily because you've got a big brand, mm. that should be a wife's duty is to constantly affirm the man of the house and constantly, um, you know, build him up. You know, as much as I have a ministry, he also has a, a huge ministry and yeah. he has a, he's made a huge impact in the African continent and yeah, in the world, you know, in the music industry, you know, and, and, and it's my duty as much as he supports me, it's also my duty as his wife to do the same for him as well so that there are no cracks you know so he never feels like he gives off more mm. than he actually ever receives you know mm. so I make sure that in my in my giving I also support mm. him as much so that he can feel that you know what mm. yeah my dreams also are important you mm. know and I stick by mm. him when he's got dreams and visions as well you know because it's it really is important that we we assist each other, yes. you know, in this journey so that we're able to grow together and move together all the time. I remember there was even a time whereby, um, because everything we were doing it by ourselves, whereby we wouldn't release um, both of our projects in the same, same year time. at the same time. Oh, okay. So we would give each other breaks, you know, space, so that this year we know that it's Mubego's okay. year, so the focus is on him. Yeah. We're doing, we, Everyone's everybody so, is here. <laughs> exactly, all the finances are yeah, going yeah, towards yeah. that. Everybody is in that, you yes. know, we're supporting his album, making sure that, you know, it, it, it goes out and does whatever God has purpose for it. And then when that season is surpassed, whether it's a year or two, then we go back, come back again, and then we move on to the next person. Then maybe it's my turn. Yeah. So we, we alternate and we yes. give each other room and space um, to shine, you know, without overpowering each mm. other as well. And, and that has really helped us. Mm, that's yeah. wonderful. You have two lovely girls, and there is one that's going to be 12 this year. Yeah. yeah. The other one's going to be 10 this year. Yeah. And what are their names? Fanele no Abongwe. Fanele and Abongwe. So which of you is a fond parent and which of you is the one that, uh, the you know, disciplinarian? So uh, why, do you, why are you looking at her? No, she you must answer that. Oh, let me, let, let me, but you have to also answer. You tell me whether her answer is correct. Okay. Well, he's definitely not the fun parent. <laughs> <laughs> why are you starting with me? <laughs> Why do you say so? Um, I'm more the fun parent. Yeah, um, I dance with the girls. I do fun things with them. Um, he's more of the he's he's the he's keeps the gentleman. You know, he keeps everybody together, <laughs> and he, he he lacks structure and order. You know, and I color outside the lines. <laughs> you know, every now and then. Um, yeah, but but I think we're both disciplinarians. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't think there's anyone who's as much as I'm the fun parent. Sure I'm also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a disciplinarian as well. So I balance both of them. Yeah. So you would agree with her? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs>